Greetings to all the bosses and the future bosses. Before I start this video podcast, I want to humbly thank each of you that reached out to me in regards to your interest in the Pilot Business 101 course. This is our very first uh, podcast episode, so if you enjoyed this, subscribe to our channel and sign up at thepilotbusiness.com. Now, I decided to create this podcast, which would be centered around being your own boss in the pilot business, uh, trucking industry, and just, you know, business uh, overall. I have a lot of truckers that um, follow this page as well, so I will be talking about um, the trucking industry as it relates to box trucks and tractor trailers. And for those of you who um, uh, they don't know who I am, my name is Levon Henson. I'm the owner of NB Carriers LLC. We're a Raleigh, North Carolina-based trucking company. Uh, DBAN is Raleigh Durham Pilots or RDU Pilots. I'm also the course creator and instructor for the Pilot Business 101 course. Now, the Pilot Business 101 course is created to help entrepreneurs become their own boss by launching their very own pilot business. Now, I understand the desire to be your own boss, especially, 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 especially when you're financing your dreams. However, so many startups fail. And a couple of reasons why they fail is really due to you know, learn how to acquire your customers, the cost of acquiring your customers, and processes uh, that need to be created to create a stressless um, experience for your customers. Now, my online course was created from market demand. I've literally had people call me from all over the US asking to create an affordable online course with tangible information. Uh, that will actually help them to become successful without costing thousands of dollars. And so I responded with offering the processes and the information that I use in my very own pallet business. So in this video, we will discuss uh, performing your due diligence before purchasing any online pallet course. So, you know, let's get to it. Let's dive right on in. I know you heard a guy from Alabama with the simplest beard say that you need to do your due diligence before purchasing his course. And I totally agree with this statement. You should do your due diligence before spending your hard earned money on any course. However, many of you think that means to only watch marketing videos or uh, testimonials from internet marketers slash students, interviews with like social media influencers, you know, um, that are used to market to a particular demographic of people. Now, these same social media influencers will then attempt to influence their followers to purchase these overpriced courses because these people are <laughs> because these people are gurus. So I decided to cover this topic as my very first video podcast for the pilot business to show you the final and most important stage in doing your due diligence. When you're performing your due diligence, you should go beyond the words being said of any of these marketing videos and research the instructor their course and and do this thoroughly before having your money split up amongst total strangers and i'm and i this goes for me too right so no one wants to have their money tied up in someone else's sales phone now how are you going to be successful when people are hoarding information from their students on a pay as you play system and i know you didn't hear me in the back so i'm gonna say it again for those in the back how are you going to be successful when people are hoarding information from their students on a pay-as-you-play system. Don't just take someone on their word. Regurgitating business terminology and videos doesn't mean that they actually understand business or even have a business. I'm trying to keep many of you from making the same mistakes as others. Now, I'm going to share my screen with you to assist many of you and performing your due diligence. And this should be the final step in your due diligence. One of my one of my uh, marketing tools that I use is I tell people that, um, you know, I own a trucking company, which I do, right? And the reason why I tell people this 
is because I want you to know that, you know, this is uh, coming straight from the horse's mouth. Like, you know, if I tell you this, I mean, this is literally what I'm doing as a business, right? So you go to North Carolina State, uh, Secretary of State. And so in the search field, you want to put Envy Carriers LLC. You want to click on search. So once you click, once you click on search, you'll see my company right here, right? Um, date form, December 28th, 2016. The status is current, currently active and we are a limited liability company, right? So now, not only do you want to verify that the business is established online, you know, uh, that it's established in the state to have permission to do business, but you also want to see, okay, well, does this business have a website, right? You know, because this is your, uh, when you talk about dealing with online, um, this is like, like for instance, you, you see the Secretary of State website, right? Like if they, if they got a brick and mortar, you can actually go to the Secretary of State of North Carolina. So they actually have a brick building. But in a virtual world, this is your brick building. This is like, okay, this is where you do business out of, and you know what I'm saying? Um, this is your, your, your allotted land in a virtual world, right? So, you know, so if you're doing business in the real world, you know, you got a location, and also in the virtual world, you have a location. So what you want to do is, um, so my, I'm gonna go to my company's website, which is R, I mean, not R, I mean, it's RDU Pilots, but this is a RDU Pilots. Uh, so this is my company website right here, this Envy Carriers. As you can see, we're a trucker company and some of the services that we offer. Um, and you come down and you see we are a family owner operated. Uh, and you see that we're based in Raleigh, North Carolina. Right, and you go down, you see, you know, and, and that's our company, right? So now I tell you, I say, well, I also own a pallet. I have a division within my trucking company called RDU Pilots, right? RDU Pilots. I don't know why I stuttered over that word just then, but um, the website is called RDU Pilots, right? Now this is my pallet website. This is um, my my store for the pilot services that my company's my company offers right and um so you see here you know this is my actual website and funny enough i've literally had people that watch my videos on youtube and literally call my businesses <laughs> like they're called my trucking company they're called the audio pilots and i'm like man you know set up a consultation bro i'm at work um, but you know, I still take the calls and you know, I appreciate that. But, um, so, so you see here, this is, you know, my, um, this is our RDU Palace website, right? So now you also, you have the palletbusiness.com. This is the website that you're looking at now. So this website here is the website for our pilot course. So with this website, um, you're able to actually, um, this is the site that we use to administer our, our online course, right? So, you know, once you can come here, you can sign up for a free account. Um, you can get exclusive content like these podcasts and I'm, that I'm putting together. They're going to be, you know, it's all business centered, you know what I'm saying? But I will be dropping nuggets in a lot of these, but they're really going to be initially like they get exclusive, get these exclusively. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to be the first ones to get this information, right? So um, if you sign up for this site, you you know those that sign up, you would get exclusive info uh, first. You know what I'm saying? Days before we even put it on YouTube. But uh, this is the site. Make sure you know if you decide to get the course, use boss code. I think I seen it at the top. Use promo code boss twenty one, and you can save fifty percent off the course. Right. Okay. So now the other course is in uh, John Charles, based in Alabama. Right. So the other course, the simplest B is right. See. <clears throat> uh, so now what we want to show right now is like this is what you want to do when you do your due diligence, right? So you saw everything that I said that I do, everything that I said that. Um, businesses that I own and, and what we have going on here is, you know, you're able to prove it by going through our website, Secretary of State, you know, that's, you know, there's documentation right there that um, basically beats conversation every day. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? That basic beats conversation every day. So and it and um so you want, you know, so documentation does be conversation. So right now we're about to beat all the conversation, right? Uh, because one of John Charles or the simp- John Charles Wilker or the simplest beers, uh, of course, like one of their marketing phrases is that um, that he's been doing this business quote um, he's been doing this business model for 23 years unquote right and you know so you want to see you know okay well first of all you want to come here no, he's never mentioned the name of his of his pallet business. So anytime you come into a situation like that where, you know, you're looking, you're trying to find the, um, the name, you know, you're trying to find, you're trying to do some research on the business, right? And you want to make sure that this business have, is actually a business and that's actually in business, right? So when you go to these uh, Secretary of State websites and you're looking for the name of a business, right? And like, say for instance, the simplest biz, you know, he say 23 years he's been doing this business model and, you know, he, he actually got a video that, um, I think a thumbnail, he actually said this $650 truck made me rich, right? <laughs> Yo, this stuff is, I can't make this stuff up. Now, I'm not saying, I am not saying that that $650 truck didn't make him rich, right? What I'm saying is it depends on your definition of rich. You know, um, if $25,000 a year, you know what I'm saying, where you ain't really have to do but so much is, if that's rich to you, then, then maybe it did make him rich. You know what I'm saying? My rich and someone else's rich is gonna be totally different, right? But the use of that word, you know, it, it pretty much goes to whatever your rich is. So whatever your rich is, then his rich is gonna be your rich to get you to buy the course, right? Okay, so what you do now, once you get to the website, right? So if you don't know the name of a business, you can actually look that business up by its officer or agent or the, or the person or the company that incorporated it, right? So since John Wilker never make, makes mention of the name of his pilot business, we actually can't look up the name of his pilot business by its name, right? But this is one thing that you can do, right? And this is public record. It's all public public record. I'm not invading on my privacy. It's public record. Anybody can go to the state employees web. I mean, to the uh, Secretary of State website, look this stuff up, right? So, since you since we don't know the name of his pilot business, now you want to make sure, right? Now, why do you want to make sure that the person who is selling you a course on how to create a pilot business actually has? a pilot business and not just somebody that's just randomly sitting in the spare bedroom um you know trying to use car sales somebody of course right so you want to ensure that you know this person has a pilot business right so since he never mentioned the name of his pilot business we can only look the name up based on his name right so his name is john wilker yeah you see it i already jumped up because i've done this already so i already know what the end result gonna be right all right, and you want to do search all records, right? Now, this is what you do when you're doing your due diligence, right? And it's not necessarily um, intruding, you know, this is just, I mean, this is what everybody do. Like, if, if you're going to do a multi-million dollar deal with a company, you want to ensure that that company is a legitimate company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, these are just some things that you should do. That's why... Um, the Secretary of State and all the states made it available for you to be able to go and verify if this business is an actual business, right? Right. So now once you get on the website, all right, so this is unlike mine. See, mine was like, you. I, everybody knew you knew my name, you know what I'm saying? You knew my business name, my business name was MBKZ LLC, you know what I'm saying? And um, everything is under that trucking company on bro. So it doesn't matter if you if you hauling toilet tissue, paper clips, you know, bag ice, whatever it is, right? Once your once that once that weight right gets to a certain tonnage, and once it gets to a certain tonnage, you are a trucking company first, right? Now unless you're doing deliveries and pickups and pickup trucks, but you're not gonna make re- any real money doing it like that because you're not being you're not able to move things in value, right? So, but ultimately, if you're moving, you know, high volume uh, type of products to where, you know, it, the tonnage get to a certain 
a certain weight, then ultimately you're a trucking company first and certain things that you're going to need to know even if it's a pallet business, it's certain things that you're going to need to know. Amazon got the same thing. Like all of these companies that operate their own trucks, they have somebody there that knows what they need to do per truck. You know, if they're dealing with outside carriers, you're going to have somebody over the carrier relations department. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to have this, these different departments, but a lot of y'all don't know that because, um, you know, you're either not in trucking or you're not, or you are in trucking and just not paying attention to what's going on around you. But nevertheless, back to the topic at hand, right? All right, so we see here, we did it. We did a search and you see John C. Wilker, right? That's the instructor for the simplest biz pilot course. I think it's like, I want to say it's like $26, $2,700 course uh, to show you how to uh, basically be a professional scavenger, right? Because that's what you teach, you know, I get 95% um, of this product for free and you know what I'm saying? I, I got low overhead, low overhead, low overhead. You know, it's a lot of that stuff going on and that's how he promotes his course. But another thing that he also uses is the fact that he's been doing this business model for 23 years, right? And he said, I've, I've had this business for 23 years and I had several other businesses, right? Okay, so here we go, cut to the chase. All right, so this is what you do when you're doing your um, your due diligence, right? Just like we did at the North Carolina Secretary of State, right? And I explained to y'all that uh, Envy Carriers has a division called RDU Palace. All of that's under the same umbrella. So when we went to the Secretary of State in North Carolina, we saw that, all right? So with John, he said he, had, he has a pilot business, which gives you the impression or may give someone the impression that um, your pilot business is not called the simplest biz, right? Or it may be called the simplest biz. You know what I'm saying? So by him never mentioning the name of his pilot company, that leads us to basically have to go through this aspect of it just to ensure that, you know, okay, well, does he have a pilot company, right? So we see here the simplest biz, right? All right. So we see the simplest biz right here. That is his uh, pallet business, um, simplest business, what he call it. All of a sudden, now he calling it pallet business, but um, that's his, uh, the simplest biz is his actual course on how to uh, scavenge for, I mean, yeah, how to scavenge for pallets and pick up free pallets and um, stuff like that, right? So when you, so we're gonna go here, cause we're gonna see, or we're gonna, we're gonna go on, but let me go to here first, right? So when you click on this, right, it's going to, just like on mine, mine tell you exactly how long I've been in business and yada, 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 right? Now, I want to highlight this date right here because this is very important, you know, and you want to make sure no matter which course that you go through, right, you want to make sure that what they say is, is you know, is what they uh, are actually doing because if not, what kind of information are you getting? Are you making somebody else's, somebody else rich? based on them telling you a bunch of, uh, you know, um, telling you what you want to hear or somebody just telling you the truth about the situation, about the industry from a, a point of view of someone who's actually out here doing it, right? So, okay, so he says 23 years. Well, the Simplest Biz uh, LLC was formulated May the 16th, 2018. Now that's very interesting, right? Because that's not 23 years. That's actually just past the three year mark, right? So we know that that's his pilot course business, right? And it's formulated as an LLC, he's a limited liability company, right? So, but now we want to see is since we don't know the name of his pilot company or his pilot business, right? Cause that didn't show 23 years of being in business. That the simplest B is the LLC only shows three years of being in business uh, since he's been selling that course. So you see John Wilker selling housing partnerships, John Wilker economic research analysis, you know, then you got a John A. Wilker, but you don't have a John C. Wilker in none of these titles that relates to a pilot business. I find that very interesting, right? Now, why do I find that very interesting? Because that is a tool that you're using to market to people, right? And I find it like, okay, if you really do business, right? And, and I'm gonna I'm break that down to y'all that, 
You know what I'm saying? Like you really got when you're doing business, like you you really have to be on top on how businesses are moving out here, what they're doing, and certain things that you know you should look for, um, and certain things that you should know. Like yeah, if it's a possibility that something that, that something can happen, then you know you want to be prepared for that possibility, right? You have and see, this is something that I want to point out, right? Because like I told you, you're a trucking company first. You haul the pilots, you haul anything that gets to a certain uh, tonnage. You know, it's certain things that you should have in place because if you're using a truck or, you know, any kind of equipment to do a, um, a particular job, you want to ensure that if anything was to happen, you don't lose your house. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and you want to be able to have some kind of protection on the law. And that's why a lot of people go, uh, go with the limited liability, uh, or the LLCs, you know, that's why a lot of people go with them. But, um, but the question, you know, so, you know, here's the thing that, and all I'm doing is telling you when you're doing your due diligence, right? You should have questions in your head. And if you can't find answers to those questions, then you need to, um, not get your money tied up in something that's not actually clear to you. It's not transparent, right? So with that being said, so if, you're, when you get into a uh, when you start a business to where you're operating equipment you operate machinery or anything like that and you got to put it on public roll or you know you just got to operate this equipment in order to um, do your job right or in order to do your services or do your business and at any time um, accidents can occur the more you use that equipment the, every time you turn a key in your truck and pull that thing out on the highway Right, your percentage of uh, being liable for something goes up. It doesn't go down. You know what I'm saying? When you, if you, if you delivering pallets or whatever the case may be, your, um, yeah, your liability is going to go up. So why wouldn't you have um, that as an LLC versus a course that's online as far as with the liability? And, you know, like I said, people can talk a lot. They can use a lot of business terminology, right? You can use a lot of business terminology. But one thing that I'm telling you, you know, sometimes you got to think what, you know, if it look like a duck, sound like a duck, and quack like a duck, then maybe it's a duck. So all I'm saying is, you know, when you're doing your due diligence, if I don't care if there was a mechanic or if they're teaching you how to run a, a mechanic shop, right? Okay, well, are you running a mechanic shop currently? No, right? So what are you doing currently? Well, um, I teach a course on how to how to run a mechanic shop. Yeah, but are you running a mechanic shop? No. Yeah, well, have you done? I've been doing it for 20 some years, right? Then what was the name of your mechanical business when you was doing it? Let me research that and see why it shut down because it could be something where, um, you, you know, if you had a mechanic shop and you was faulty at something or, you know, you caused some kind of damage or home or an insurance policy or something, I need to know because I need to know who I'm getting my information from. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's very important. I keep telling y'all it's very important, right? So now if we just did a simple Google search, right? All right. So there's this website for his pilot course, right? Let me see if I pull. Yeah, so he has a website for his pilot course. He got a Facebook page for his pilot course, but where is the website for his pilot business, right? So these are some of the steps that you need to ensure, like you really need, this is what doing your due diligence is about. Because like, say if, um, now let's see if if we put in his pallet business, right? We don't know his name. We're just gonna put those keywords in there together. See what pops up. No, that's pallet enterprise. That's not him. Okay, so what all you see is like promotions for his course. Like, where's the pallet business? And, and, and look, when you do the search on it, I hope, I know, I hope y'all see this right here, right? I hope y'all see this right here. Do y'all see this? Okay, y'all think it's a game? This ain't no game, bro. Like, when you talk business like this, this is what we talking when we talk business, right? So, we put in John Wilker, right? And look who website comes up. 
thepilotbusiness.com. See, I'm showing and proving in these videos, man. Like, it ain't a whole lot of, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's just really being real with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the only thing you see is the training course, the training course, the training course, the training course. Nobody could find John Charles Wilker's pallet business. Right? Nobody can find his pallet business. So if you decide, right? So say if you say, okay, well, look, man, I'll tell you what. You know, I'm thinking about going, and I'm not telling you don't go with the pallet business. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm definitely not telling you to do that. I'm saying do your due diligence because the very first move that you're going to make in business could be a costly one, right? No one wants to, you know, uh, put some money up thinking that they're going to get some information only to find out that they got to keep paying to get to the information that they need. Um, that's just something that I, I, I actually never wanted to be a part of. The whole concept of, you know, picking up free pilots, like, bro, I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I teach my students, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, we charge over here, bro. You know, like, real talk, like, you, you have a cost of operation. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a business, right, you're a for-profit business, you have no business out here doing free business for businesses for free. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, that's like, like, bro, don't ever do that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I wanted to, you know, kind of create these podcasts to, to be able to break like information down. You know what I'm saying? Where it's, it's like things that I actually don't have time to do in the video because I'm at a customer location and I'm trying to hurry up and shoot this and get up out of the way or, you know what I'm saying? Like this gives me time to actually sit down and give y'all a chance to really know me, you know what I'm saying? And get to um, see what we're trying to do. And like I'm telling y'all, the um, you know, the pilot business course is just the beginning. It's not just that, you know, uh, and I'm not telling you just to buy my course. L listen, what I'm going to tell you, right? I'm going to tell you, if you're going to spend your money, because right now you see, like, my course is $11.98, right? And for all y'all that are looking at this video, you see right here, it says Boss, um, hold on. You see right here, you got promo code Boss21. You can get my course for $5.99. The Simplest Bees course is 20 I want to say it's 25, 95, 2600, 2700, something like that, right? And basically, you're going to be um, learning a business method to where you're actually enslaving yourself to these companies. And that's not what I teach, right? So I teach you, like, if, you're, if the key, if you turn the ignition in your truck, right? If you, you know, in your, in your truck, you, if you're turning the ignition in your truck, you need to be getting paid for that if you own a company, if you own a business, right? Even the trash trucks get paid to pick up your trash. Think about that, man. When when you pay your taxes and you pay your property taxes, sales taxes, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Like that money come under, nobody's picking up free services. I mean, nobody's picking up free product. Like, we're not doing that, you know what I'm saying? And um, so, like I say, like, and we actually run a business, you know, like, you're not going to, you know, like, half of the videos that I got on my YouTube channel is, like, really me in the field, you know what I'm saying? Then the other half of my, of my videos are me, you know, just giving free game and, you know, just talking to people, you know what I'm saying? Just putting some information out there to help you avoid spending this money that a lot of you can't afford to spend. Right. So I, I looked at a whole lot of parameters when I was putting together my course. Right. So I was looking at, well, if they don't know anything about trucking, you know, I wanted to break it down and not just be um, the word. OK, now you got to catch up to catch on to what I'm talking about and leave a lot of you lost in the sauce. So what I did was when when I actually created my course, I created my course under the impression that my student knows nothing about business, knows nothing about pilots, knows nothing about trucking, right? Now, not only do I show you how to come out here and do this business model, right? I show you everything about it. Like we, we break it down, even trust, like I gotta get out of here today. Actually, I gotta get ready to get up out of here in a few minutes, so I'm ready to pull this video to, the, to a, uh, a close. 
But like even with um, one of my students, like he just joined a course, I wanna say about uh, two weeks ago maybe, week ago, week, week or two ago, and um, all my students got con got contact with me, right? So they can either hit me on Facebook, they can hit me up email, or they can literally call my phone, you know? Um, and I don't charge a, a, an additional $197 like John Wilker and the, and the simplest bids, right? And I don't, um, and I don't tell my students, well, just ask the question in the group and somebody answering it for you, right? Somebody will answer it for you. Like, I don't do that. As a matter of fact, in, one of, in my, my course video to show you how to join our private Facebook group, I literally tell people People like I'm responsible for answering you any questions that you may have, right? Not a student. If they want to chime in, great, but I'm responsible for answering your questions. And that's what I got in my in my um that's in the video in my course, right? The one I'm telling the students how to join our uh, our private Facebook page. So um so yeah, so what what we teach you is not only how to come out here and create a business, we also have we teach you how to market your business. You know, we have PDF files, and these very files that we have in our um, in my pilot in the pilot course are the files that I use in my very business. <laughs> like that's you know, like I, I I'm t I'm sharing with you what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? It's not a lot of banter. It's not a whole. It's not a lot of fluff. Like them numbers that I show y'all, the real numbers. Them PayPal uh, um, payments, them real PayPal payments. Them checks, them real checks. You know what I'm saying? Because I run to operate a real business. This is what we doing. You know, this is what we do. So, but yeah, so I, so one of my students ended up, uh, back to that. So one of my students called me and hit me yesterday and he was looking to buy, he's, he got a box truck, but he's also going to buy a, a tractor trailer. And so, you know, we was talking and whatever, and he was like, you know, he was looking at this international. And I was like, oh man, did you see the, I said, you know, so I've talked to him, did you see the, um, the uh, course module, when I talk about the engines in the trucks, he was like, yeah, I said, well, what kind of engine does it have? He was like, man, I don't even know, man. Let me find out right quick. So, okay, somebody had just sent it to him, so he was just telling me about it, that he was gonna go look at it. And um, so when he, the guy hit him back and said, yeah, it's a Max Force engine. I said, bro, leave the engine alone, bro. Not, and I'm not knocking Max Force, you know what I'm saying? I'm not knocking Max Force. My experience is my experience, right? So I recommend certain engines uh, that you should look for when you're purchasing a truck. And certain engines you should stay away from. Not because the engines are bad, just because, oh, because all of it is mechanical. At some point in time, these machines break down. So we get it, you know, we all know it's a machine, but it's the ones that break down the most that I try to stay away from, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's certain engines that I recommend. It's a process that I tell you to go through in order to pick out your trucks um, or pick out your, the equipment that you get ready to purchase. So it's not like you just left by yourself. And he's a local student, so he actually asked me to go with him today. He's gonna look at a day cab. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna go out there and look it over at form uh, with him. Um, to see, you know, if it's something that he should go ahead and get a mechanic to take a look at. It. Um, and the reason why I say that is like, I'm not a diesel mechanic. And I tell my students this, when I went to buy my, buy my first truck, I uh, ended up buying a 2005 Freightliner Columbia, okay? Um, and it got, it had a C-15 cat engine. Nice truck, I man, it's, it's a straight truck for what I wanted to do. I wanted to make money. I'm, only thing I'm concerned about is the truck mechanically sound. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out here, man. Like, sometimes I look at a lot of these truckers, man, that get out here and, you know, they get a little money and they'll shine up and chrome and out, chrome their trucks out and they'll throw hardwood floors on the inside of their trucks. But then they they get a matching trailer, right? <laughs> Pulling broker freight, right? No website, no processes in place to be, to be able to do any real business, right? And I see these guys every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a whole nother story though. I'm not gonna really get into that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like I said, to each his own, but you know, what you in business for? That's all I'm saying. Like, are you in business to make money or are you in business that look like you got a lot of money? Because, you know, I know a lot of, you know, nobody wants to quit their job to start a trucking company to be living job by job. Like, that's not, there's no way to live. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're your own boss. And a lot of it is not that you can't do the job. Some of y'all can do amazing jobs, 
with um you know what I'm saying some I, I know a lot of awesome truck drivers but it's the business part you know it's, it's like a lot of things behind business that a lot of you um you don't really pay a lot of attention to and that's why I'm here you know to bring a different thought process to the game and to try to help as many as you as I possibly can um and try and, and not just help you help you know we're gonna help each other you know, like I'm telling you, man, like once I go into this trucking aspect to it, and see, that's another thing, another thing that I want to touch on because you got to, I'm seeing a lot of guys on YouTube talking about how they are making a killing with Amazon. And I find it not only hard to believe, impossible to believe. Like, first of all, if you a boss, and I'm going to end it with this right here. If you a boss, right? Like when I signed up with Amazon, when I first got my box truck, I didn't get my box truck to sign on with Amazon. I got my box truck and I signed on with Amazon after I got my truck and order. Um, I signed up with them to make money with my box truck until I found a direct shipper for my um, for my box truck. So what I ended up doing was, so many of you that sign on with Amazon, you know you gotta go through the little orientation screen, right? And immediately, listen to me, Immediately, I knew I'm not doing no work with Amazon. You gotta be out your mind, bro, right? And the reason why I say that is because Amazon has this thing where it's none, their prices are non-negotiable, right? So you wanna fix prices, right? Now, I already understand that Amazon is a freight broker. A lot of people think that they're actually a direct shipper, but they're not, they're a freight broker. Um, so those are two things that made me say, nah, I'm not going, I can, I can kind of, you know, if it's something little local to get my direct shipper, I was, I was willing to do it. You know what I'm saying? But when I realized that, um, it was like non-negotiable, but like, bro, how you going to tell me how to negotiate, how to bid for my company? You know what I'm saying? So that's what it, when, when you say being a boss, that's what that means. That means, look, look man. I got to go get my own customs. I got to create the own. When you start a business, that's literally like you procreated a child. Now, what I mean by that is you are the guardian of that business. You are solely responsible on if that business survives or fails, lives or dies. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's solely on you. And if you have your business out here, right? Going back to saying this, I'm going to say it again because I like saying it, right? If you got a business and you are here, somebody telling you to go and perform free services to other businesses, you need to leave them people alone. Your business, you about to soon be out of business, right? And that's something that we're going to touch on. Um, that's something else we're going to touch on in another video, but... Um, I just wanted to drop this video right here, this very, our very first podcast, um, doing your due diligence before you purchase any pilot course. And um, like I said, man, it's just something that I thought that I needed to share based on the um, the uh, based on the people that you know I've literally like talked to in the last couple of weeks who um, who said that you know that it just don't work for them, right? So, you know, um, so I'm like, well, did you do a due diligence? How you know that this person even has a pilot, uh, a pilot business, right? So if you're doing any kind of, um, and even with me, you know, if you want to know, okay, well, does he have a pilot business? Just go to my audiopilots.com, right? That's the name of my pilot business. How, that's why I do, um, that's, you know, that, that's my pilot company. That's my pilot business, right? It's the division within MB Carriers LLC, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, that's what you want to do when you're doing your due diligence. You want to ensure that this is a legitimate company. Now, I'm not saying that John Charles Wilker doesn't have uh, the simplest biz is not a legitimate company. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the simplest biz is a legitimate company, but no one knows about your pilot business. And if you're marketing that you started this business and you've been operating this business for 23 years, I think it's about time for you to show people where your business is at. Here are a couple of questions that you should ask, right? Before you spend money with any of the pilot courses, right? You know, do they have a, you know, ask, you gotta ask yourself, do they have a pilot business website? Do they have a um, a pilot course website? Cause you wanna make sure that, you know, how, how, how are they gonna administer the course to you, right? 
do they have um, any kind of trucking knowledge? Because at the end of the day, you know, it's certain laws, rules, and regulations that you're going to need to know, you know, and um, do they have any of that experience, right? These are just questions that you need to ask, right? And if they say they own a business, you know, so if they if they say they own a pallet business, and as a course instructor, if I say, yeah, I own a pallet business, but you never see me picking up pallets, you very seldomly see me selling pallets. Like I might have two or three videos out of about 130, 140, right? And you know, if the answers that you get are satisfaction satisfactory to you, then pull the trigger. But if you, you know, if, if you say, man, I only got twenty five hundred dollars to spend, this stuff right here, you know, it gotta add up, right? Or what is it, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars, whatever the price of the course is. But you know, if if you don't really have that to lose in business, then um, you should do your due diligence and you should ask these questions. What's the name of your pilot business? Can I look it up online? Can I, can, is there some documentation that you have a pilot business? Because I don't want you to just, you know, buy a $650 truck, take some pictures at your cousin's warehouse, get your truck loaded, pull up, pull off, and you film that and say, oh man, okay, I'm, I got enough to get a course and now you don't see you doing the work no more, right? So you want to make sure that that's not what you were experiencing. So you want to make sure that you're not giving your money to somebody and making them rich um, based on what a, a social influencer tell you that probably haven't even done this research themselves. You know what I'm saying? That's why brands don't uh, that's why brands are, are mindful or careful of what other brands that they mingle with, right? Because if you mix with a bad brand and that bad brand do something, that could put you and your brand out of business. So this is my um, first podcast, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. And um, this is Vaughn with the Pilot Business, and I'm out here. Peace.